All right, welcome to Turbo's Tech Table. Um, I am Turbo or Andrew, uh, whichever you want to call me. And in this series, I'm going to be going over some uh, basic, not so basic, but more in depth uh, maintenance, uh, tear down, repair of markers uh, for you paintball enthusiasts out there. Um, if you need a little background on me, my name is Andrew. I've uh, been in the sport of paintball for about uh, 13 years at this point. And I'm an airsmith, so I work on just about everything. Um, for this video, I'm going to be looking at the Tipman A5 and uh, in in relation to a lot of the Tipman line. Um, a lot of this video will also have a lot of similarities to the Tipman 98. Uh, the um, X7 is almost identical to this. Uh, so if you've worked on if you can work on one Titman, you can work on multiple Titmans. Um, there's only a couple of base designs. For this video, I'm going to be uh, first going over kind of some of my impressions and thoughts on just the, the basic design. Um, and then if you just want to get to skip straight to the teardown, uh, go to this time. And if you have parts everywhere and you're wondering how to put it back together, ah, parts everywhere, uh, go straight to this time. So, uh, this Titman A5, it's a, and most of the Titman line is a, in, it's called inline blowback, uh, which means you got a bolt at the front and you got a hammer at the back. Titman calls this one the rear bolt. It's a hammer, whatever, same difference. Uh, the valve is in between, that's where the airline comes into. Uh, hammer hits the valve, opens it up, shoots air forward, uh, then recocks the whole setup, starts again. Uh, this A5 in particular has an RT on it, for those of you with a keen eye. That's what the little uh, silver piston here is. And you can also tell if you flip it over, you have this secondary air line here. Um, all the A5s are going to have this front one going to the cyclone feeder. But uh, not all of them will have the rear one. Uh, I'm going to be showing you guys uh, two different ways to tear these down. Um, kind of depending on what you need. Uh, as far as my impressions of these, uh, I've worked on tons of them. It is by far not my favorite design. Um, I believe the design was outdated about 20 years ago, and Titman continues to use it. But that aside, uh, you already you know you have it. You might as well use it. I'm not uh, not knocking anybody's choice on what they're what they're running out on the field with. I'd rather you get out there and play some paintball than not. So let's tear into this thing. Um, first thing, obviously, barrel, hopper, get rid of them, you don't need them. And I'm going to give you guys some tips and tricks along the way. So the first way, actually I'm going to leave that one, the first way I'm going to show you how to tear these things apart is to get to the internals uh, without having to completely split the marker in half. These are designed in a, let's call it a clamshell, and they, they bolt together side by side. Um, and to do a complete tear down you have to take apart both halves but if you just need to get to some of the internal bits there's an easier way to do it uh, so first thing you want to do is remove these two pins at the back and um, on the whoop, on the X7 lineup uh, these two pins will also be holding in your stock and if you saw that that was the rear cap that just went flying I forgot to mention you should watch out for that because it's under tension uh, and uh, it can go flying and if that does happen you need your rear cap and your uh, pin your guide pin for the spring so once you get those out take your spring out you also need to remove this one single pin in front of the valve here and it'll be hiding behind the cyclone piston so sometimes flat blade screwdriver is the easiest way to get to it remove that one and then there's a little clip here on the bottom and if you pull that back after you've removed the pin, you should be able to pull out what's called the tombstone. And it's basically the air inlet for the marker. And they call it the tombstone because it looks like one. So with that out, if you flip the marker over and locate on the other side, this is your velocity screw. Which I don't have the Allen key out for. Uh, just go ahead and remove that velocity screw completely. Uh, magnets are very useful for tearing apart stuff. Use them so you don't lose parts. So with that out, um, that should free up everything on the internals. The easiest way to check is to uh, pull your caulking handle back and see if everything comes slides towards the back. 
and grab a pair of pliers and grab your uh, hammer there. Everything should just slide straight out the back. There it is. So this is how it's set up inside the marker. Just like that. Valve core stays in place, then, then the hammer and the front bolt slide back and forth. Uh, your valve core is in here. Should be free right now. If you need to get this guy out, you have to make sure you have the velocity screw. Actually, you don't need to have that out. Um, but it should slide straight out. This one's a little easier. Sometimes they get kind of stuck in here. You gotta use a little force to get them out. But there's your valve core. Not too much to these guys. Um, there's a single O-ring here. This is one of my gripes about this design. This O-ring actually holds everything in place and I really don't like that. I'll explain a little bit why in a sec. But with that O-ring out, you can get to your poppet seal, your valve spring, and this washer that kind of gaps everything. And then your, your valve there is replaced, or is uh, clear. To reinstall, just reinsert them. Make sure you don't forget the washer, because that will cause problems if you do. And get your O-ring back in there. This O-ring is kind of important because it uh, it is a seal, a pressurized seal. The tombstone fits in here like this. And um, I've seen some Titmans that they've just gotten old enough that, that uh, the gap has worked its way loose and they just will not seal. If you have some leaking issues, out the uh, the port on the bottom here uh, that o-ring could be the culprit uh, it also could be this larger one on the valve face uh, especially if you have any uh, leaking down the barrel um, I would be looking at this guy here or possibly um, the power tube itself the power tube is this piece it actually holds pressure a lot of times what happens these are plastic and they can crack um, especially I've seen them right here between this hole here that's kind of important and the back and uh, or just down in the in the midsection anywhere if that happens it'll leak air out and it'll come out down the barrel so what I showed you guys is the uh, the first way that these come apart I'm gonna show you the second way real quick once I get this back in place this is one of the issues about the way I just tore it apart though is um, what, the reason I don't like that O-ring there is because when I have to, when I'm going to go to put this back in, I have to push on the hammer, which pushes on the valve, and that O-ring is the only thing that's holding the valve in place. And if it's not very strong, what can happen is the entire valve comes apart as I'm putting it back in. And there's not a great way to fix that, except for tearing apart the entire marker. As you're putting this in, make sure and pull the trigger a few times because in order to clear the sear, which I'll get to when I tear it down the other way, um, you'll have to do that or else it'll all just hold up in the back. So that's back in place. So second way to tear these down, uh, you basically complete disassembly. You can get to more parts. You can see everything easier. There's a few other advantages. So we'll go about that one. Basically, um, you have to first remove all the pins and screws. Basically, if you see it and you can take it out, take it out. So what I just did is take apart the, uh, take the two pins out that hold the grip in place. Uh, the one difference on this model, because it has the RT, is there's a port back here, a pressurized port. That screws in or that not screws in but it actually slides in place back here if there's actually it's hard to see but there's an o-ring on the end of this uh, port here if you're having issues with your RT and it's not resetting you can try um, replacing that o-ring if it's if it's not a good seal that's what can happen so this screw back here uh, does not there we go comes out this one, I, again, don't really like some of the choices Titman makes. These two O-rings on here are uh, custom sizes. And they cannot, you, know, you can find them, but it's not easy. So, I don't know why Titman chose that. It's kind of a dumb choice. Why not just use standard O-rings? 
but that, that aside, it is pretty rare that you need to replace those. So, like I said, if you can see it, take it out. This is um, the same way you'll take apart a Tipman 98. Uh, the only difference being that the gri uh, grip stays in place. Uh, the sear stays in place. And there's actually a few more pieces to the Tipman 98. Uh, because of that, because the whole trigger assembly kind of has to come apart with the marker. Uh, this bolt right here is actually going through and holding the cyclone in place. But it also, because it does that, it also holds the marker uh, in, in place. One thing I like to do just to get it out of the way is remove this bolt on the cyclone because that now it's completely free of the marker since I already took off the other bolt. Um, on these cyclones, in all honesty, if it's not causing problems, don't don't touch it. Um, there's only one seal in this piston here. Uh, it's not a normal O-ring, so if you have to replace it, you have to custom order it. Uh, but if it's not causing problems, don't don't touch it. Just take it off, put it on, clean it. Uh, one other bolt to realize is down here in the grip, and uh, if you this one's a little tricky sometimes um, because it can it can cause some issues if you have it tight and uh, you're having problems taking the marker apart. It can actually be holding the marker together. But if you have fancy little tools like this, you can take them apart. This should be the last bolt, as long as nothing managed to thread itself on. So with it on its side like this, gently remove the top. One thing, if it's the first time you're taking apart a Tipman, one thing to notice is this spring, which is on the caulking handle, is going to pop out of place. And uh, it'll sit kind of like that. It'll go beyond its little reach. And... Uh, <clears throat> Tipman says, uh, oh yeah, it's easy to put back in. You just kind of poke it back in place and it sits there. Yeah, that doesn't happen, Tipman. What happens is it goes up and then you're trying to put the marker together. You end up squishing it. It's horrible. So what I do this spring, I actually clip the uh, first three or four rings off of it. And when you do that, it'll it's not under tension when you go to put the marker back together. Uh, so it causes a lot less headaches. Uh, but as you can see, here's everything again. Uh, this little clip usually comes out too. Leave that spring there if you can. Uh, if you were eagle-eyed, you saw the detent here, or uh, Tipman calls it the ball latch. Same purpose. Stops the paintballs from rolling down the barrel while they're ready to fire. Uh, this is So there are a few things in here that you have to take the marker completely apart for um, if, to get to them, like the detent. Um, if you need to get to on a lot of Tipmans there's actually an o-ring around this port right here that port is the one that splits the feed between the RT and the uh, cyclone in this marker it's pretty rare that you'd ever have to replace that one but uh, you know chances are it can happen but here's our valve assembly again again same thing you just take it out the side instead of out the back if you're ever having issues with uh, your marker not recocking properly this o-ring on the hammer or rear bolt as Tipman calls it is uh, the first step go after that one uh, because if, it, if there's air getting past it it can cause some recocking issues uh, the marker won't fire so these uh, so this is basically it all apart and uh, we'll get started getting it back together here alright so getting ready to get this thing back together here uh, the biggest struggle I've found in putting these tip pins back together actually is uh, making sure you have all the pieces in place before you seal up the two halves, which is kind of a ridiculous thing to need to know, to uh, to do, if you ask me. Taking apart uh, a lot of markers in my day, and uh, 
usually you put uh, piece number one in, put piece number two in, so on and so forth. But with the Tipman blowback design, you have to make sure you have pieces one through 20 in place. And you cannot forget a single one. And if you do, you have to take it back apart. And then you end up forgetting three more. So, I'm again, I'm not a huge fan of these this design, but uh, if you have it, you have it. That's your choice, not mine. Uh, so, getting everything back in place here. I uh, got our, our bolt, our power tube with the valve core in it, a uh, linkage arm, and a uh, hammer. Or as Tipman calls it, the rear bolt, which is a ridiculous name if you ask me. Uh, when you get this guy in place, make sure that the opening on the power tube is facing down so the tombstone can slide into it later. And then, uh, as I mentioned before, this uh, return spring up here for the cocking, cocking handle, uh, I like to clip three rings off of it so it'll sit nicely in place like that. Otherwise, you need about five hands to hold everything in place while you're trying to put this thing together for exactly reasons like that. Our rear sight just likes to fall out randomly. So, here goes attempt number one. Hopefully, I didn't forget anything because if I do, I'm going to be taking it back apart. Just line everything up. Slide it in place. And then what I like to do while you're holding it together... See, I know I have an issue now because I can see a gap here. So something is binding. Alright. There we go. And uh, one thing I should mention, while you have this apart, uh, one of the easy things you can do is to... Um, oil it while it's apart like this make sure you only use a uh, paintball oil it's a uh, full synthetic you don't want to be using something like WD-40 because it'll actually uh, start eating your o-rings over time they'll turn to mush essentially uh, if you saw that I just oiled the the hammer o-ring here um, and if I have it apart I usually put a drop in the valve itself um, for these one of the easiest ways to oil them is once you have it together to actually just drop a few oils or drops of oil down the ASA here, screw your tank in, and dry fire it about 10 times, and that'll actually get the oil into the marker and it'll go everywhere it needs to go. Um, one of the other things I like to do when I have the valve apart is uh, there's an o ring on the back of the valve that I actually use grease on. Now, uh, grease I would not recommend for the entire marker. But any o-ring that is static that's not moving uh, is fine to use the grease on again not not a huge thing you don't have to do that um, I just find it stays in there a little bit better so that's what I like to do it doesn't doesn't affect the performance one way or the other all right so there we go that's that was a nice click so as you can see there's no gap so everything is lined up this time. And we'll start cranking stuff down here. I don't want that one yet because, oh, you know what? Just realized I forgot something. If uh, somebody out there probably already realized it, but I forgot the rear sight. It managed to work its way loose. So, we get to, at least slightly, take things apart. If we can uh, wiggle it in there, we will. And we can, alright. Uh, in my uh, experience, except for an autococker, which I'm sure I'll do at a later day, these Tipman's, uh some of the longer breakdowns as far as how simple the design is and yet uh, how many pieces Kitman managed to put it together with. Oh, that's not for this. I should mention one of the uh, reasons that I'm not a huge fan of this design 
is I have actually come across a handful of Kitman markers in my day that have actually been uh, dangerous, uh, literally dangerous. They would not chronograph below 300 feet per second, and uh, you should never be shooting over 300 for any reason, in my opinion. Um, but the, the basically it comes down to the design of the markers themselves, the way they are designed, the way the air flows through them. Um, that you every time you fire this marker, it will use the same amount of air no matter what. Um, it's just a matter of how fast it comes down the barrel. And if you have the right conditions, you can make it so that uh, these markers are dangerous and without modification, they will not shoot at safe speeds. I've come across a handful of those. Uh, another reason I'm not a huge fan of this design uh, because it's easier to do without realizing it. One of the easiest ways is if, a, if you get a brand new Titman and you put a, a long barrel on it. This one isn't uh, ridiculously long, but if you get a you know 20 inch barrel or so, uh, what happens is the since the valve is going to be placing the same amount of air down the barrel each shot. Uh, just at different rates if the barrel is so long that The paintball takes extra time to get out of the barrel You're if you're pushing on it with all of that air as opposed to just some of it if you get a short barrel You'll only be pushing on the paintball with some of that air the paintball will exit and then the rest of the air is just wasted uh, But if you get a long enough barrel all of that air pushes on the paintball it pushes it up to unsafe speeds um, and it, it can happen, um, but you know if you're if you know what you're doing, and especially if you just follow simple steps to protect yourself and protect your friends, um, like have a chronograph, you can avoid that. So back in place here. Uh, put the front pin in first on your grip frame because you have to get the, the spring and a quick tip for you guys on these springs this is the same spring that's on the top to return the uh, cocking handle here so uh, if you're in a pinch and you lose your mainspring here just know that you can actually take that one out replace your mainspring and uh, be set don't forget your spring guide rod here and back cap kinda need the back cap for it to shoot Hold that all in place while you throw a couple pins in it. Uh, tombstone just slides back in place, locks in place. Don't forget your pin. This is a fairly important pin. Uh, you don't want that thing flying out at you. I can tell you from experience it's not uh, not exactly friendly when it whips out of there at pressure. All right, and there is one fully expendable Titman ninety or A five, not ninety eight, uh, even though it does operate a lot along the same lines. And uh, I already did a rebuild on this one earlier. That's why I wasn't replacing any O rings. That and it would take twice as long to do the video if I can screw my tank in the correct way. For those of you. Uh, aspiring airsmiths out there if you get yourself one of these little guys it'll save you a lot of headaches it's just a uh, inline on off valve and you can put it on any tank that's plugging into any marker so when you have a marker like this that does not have an on off you can basically put one on it make sure it's cocked and there's pressure so it's definitely sealed Voila. And uh, for those of you who are not familiar with the RT here, 
this little tiny screw is what controls how fast it uh, comes back into place so if you crank it one way or the other you can uh, control how fast that goes but that's that's for another day my helpers here all right well i hope you you guys enjoyed this video um like i said it's one of my early ones so if you have any suggestions or uh want to see anything in particular if i have the ability to i will don't forget your velocity screw that's very important um so just uh shoot me some comments let me know what you like let me know what you think could use some improvement and uh, get out there and play some paintball